Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Landon with LMR.com. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at SVE's front tow hook designed for the 2005 to 2014 S197 Mustang. So my belief of a tow hook, I think it goes both ways. Um, there's those of us out there uh, that see it more on the form side of things. Uh, and we want a tow hook because it looks cool on the front of the car. And then the other side of that would be the function side of it. There's those of us out there uh, that purchase the tow hook because we auto cross the car. Uh, we may take it to a high performance driving event or we even drag race it for that matter. And then if the car breaks down, you go off track and it can't move under its own power, you need a secure location at the front of the car for a safety vehicle to move your car back to the pits or whatever ever it is that it needs to go. And that's the case here for the SVE front tow hook. All right, now let's go ahead and take a little bit closer look at what the kit contains. So we'll start off with the front and rear bracket. Uh, this is some heavy duty steel, powder coated black, and these are designed to sandwich the front crash bar. And this is what's gonna give us a really, really good anchor point for the tow hook. Next are these little winglets is what I'm calling them, but uh, I guess their formal name is the uh, splitter bracket. For those of you that are gonna be purchasing this SVE front tow hook kit, most of you won't use this. This is only gonna be for people that have installed a Ford Original Laguna Seca front splitter, an aftermarket front splitter that uses splitter support rods, or if you're installing the tow hook onto a 2012 or 2013 Laguna Seca Boss 302. And what their purpose is, is uh, you install two of the provided speed nuts, and this gives you a point to attach your splitter rods uh, to the front of the vehicle because otherwise when you run this tow hook, the factory setup gets removed. Okay, now let's shift gears to some of the build aluminum parts in the kit. First, we'll start off with the spacer block. Technically, this is optional, uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you, just run the darn thing. Its job is to uh, move the tow hook mounting position downward away from the uh, upper area of the lower front grille. Uh, but to determine if this is optional or not, you have to build out the tow hook assembly on the crash bar. And then if you need it, you gotta take everything back apart and install the longer carriage bolts, which we'll uh, touch base on here in just a second. So again, just go ahead and install this from the get-go. The next build aluminum piece, I'm calling this the receiver plate. So this has uh, six mounting locations and these six mounting locations, what they do is basically move the receiver plate forwards or rearwards. So if you use the frontward holes, it's gonna bring it back. If you use the rearward holes, it's gonna bring it forward. This is gonna have to be uh, your best judgment on how you want your tow ring positioned. Me personally, I want it to where there's just enough room uh, to basically hook the tow ring. I don't want this thing sticking too far out because if I walk by the front of the car, you know, I run the risk of beating my shins all the heck and I don't want that. So, and then the last bit of aluminum piece is the tow ring. This is pretty simple in what this does. It attaches to the receiver plate via a clevis pin and clip. And then uh, we have a really nice uh, engraved SVE logo there at the front where it uh, attaches to the receiver plate. Just mention the clevis pin and clip. You're gonna get that in the kit. You'll get four speed nuts. Two will be used to secure the front and rear brackets. And then two of them will be optional if you need the splitter support brackets. We give you two flange bolts, four nylock nuts, and then eight carriage bolts. There's gonna be four long, four short. Other than that, a few fitment notes, because it covers the entire S197 range of cars, there will be some front lower grille modification required. Uh, and you can see this here on this 2013 GT, and we will touch base on how to modify uh, that front lower grille later on in this video. Uh, another thing, you will have to remove the impact absorber uh, that is attached to the front of the crash bar. Technically, you could reuse it if you wanted it to, but we didn't worry about any of that. And uh, what you would do, you'd basically cut the impact absorber uh, to where it would clear the tow hook assembly, and you would reinstall your push pins, or what I've done in the past too, is I would just use some like high quality uh, gaff or gaffer tape is what they call it, and attach that impact absorber back to the crash bar. And then another fitment note is the tow hook assembly itself. You can center this on the crash bar or you can offset it to the passenger or driver's side. If you offset it to either the driver or passenger side, keep in mind, you still have a window of where that needs to be positioned because of the opening of the front lower grille. It's also important to note, if you do offset it uh, to either one of those sides, 
your tow hook won't sit even in relation to the front bumper. It'll be just at a slight angle because of the curvature of the crash bar. So other than that, uh, you will obviously have to remove the front bumper. Uh, we have some dedicated videos for both the 2005 to 2009 and the 2010 to 2014 Mustangs. And we'll leave those available for you down in the video description, as well as a uh, tool list. Now, because of the design of the tow ring and the receiver plate, and because we use a um, clevis pin and clip to secure it to one another, uh, there's just a little bit of tolerance there. So if you're going down the road, uh, you know, may, there may be some bumps and you know some unevenness. You may just get some slight rattle from the tow hook area, uh, and that's completely normal. Which that's gonna bring me to my next point is you may want to stow this in your glove box. Now, granted, it won't look as cool when you're going down the road. Just kind of a tip there, if you wanted to remove your tow ring, stow it in the glove box uh, and basically only use it on uh, track days or when you actually need it. Another good talking point is the normal wear and tear if the tow ring has to be utilized. Some scarring and ring deformation is completely normal if you have to use the tow hook for its intended purpose. That's pretty much a rundown of the kit. So we'll jump over here to this 2013 GT and we'll walk you through the process. So to get started, you'll first want to remove the front bumper. With the front bumper removed, this lies the push pins securing the impact absorber to the crash bar. Because of the small head on the push pin, they may want to pull through the absorber. If that happens, just pull the absorber away from the crash bar and then remove the push pins. If desired, clean anything in the general area while you have the front bumper removed from the car. Before installing the front bracket, make note of the carriage bolts in the kit since we provided two different lengths. The longer bolts are to be used if you're going to run the provided spacer plate, and the shorter bolts are to be used if you do not run the spacer plate. Uh, as stated previously, just go ahead and install the longer bolts through the front bracket. With the SVE logo positioned so that it's legible, install the front bracket over the crash bar and then swing it down. Because of the design of the crash bar, you can only install the front bracket on the passenger side or driver side of the crash bar and then place it where you like. We're installing this tow hook in the middle of the crash bar and we're using the dimpling in the crash bar as the centering method. On some cars, there is a center rib in the middle of the crash bar that's gonna require you to slightly offset the tow hook to either side. Before installing the rear bracket, install the two provided speed nuts with the nose of the speed nut positioned down into the outboard locations on the bracket. Position the rear bracket over the four bolts and swing it up around the crash bar. Loosely install the two provided flange bolts. We'll tighten these later on in the install. If your car has a Laguna Seca splitter or an aftermarket splitter that utilizes support rods, you'll need to install the two provided splitter brackets at this time. Before doing so, install two of the provided speed nuts over the outboard holes with the nose facing up. They are side specific and the way you tell which is which is by installing the brackets so that the bend is ramping toward the crash bar and the flat edge is positioned towards the front. Now we can install the spacer plate. The radius corners face towards the front. Hold this with your free hand and then install the receiver plate in the desired location with the machine groove positioned down. Hold the assembly and then loosely thread the four nylock nuts. To prevent the carriage bolts from pushing out, you'll wanna just touch the bolt with the nut and then turn it so that the threads engage. Squeeze the bracket together and tighten the two flange bolts to 15 pound feet. Run down the nylock nuts in an even fashion and then torque them to 35 pound feet working in a crisscross pattern. Now it's time to test fit the bumper and mark the lower grille for modification. Reinstall the bumper and center it into place. Make note of the area that you need to cut and mark these areas with a paint pen or something similar. Double and triple check the marked area before cutting. Remember the old saying, measure twice, cut once. Remove the bumper and place it on a stand facing up. Use an appropriate tool and cut the marked areas. Once all the cuts are made, test fit the bumper again just to be sure you're happy with the modification. Remove the bumper again and either cut away more material or clean up the flashing with a file. Remove any leftover markings with an adhesive remover. Now we can reinstall the bumper in reverse order of removing it. Make sure you reconnect any electrical connections and reposition any sensor. Once the bumper is reinstalled, you can get the car on the ground and install the ring. The SVE logo will face towards you. Slide the pin into place in either direction and then install the clip. After that, you're good to go. All right, people, so wrapping things up here. Uh, like I said, this is some good quality stuff here. Um, all the bracketry built aluminum. Uh, it's made right here in the USA. And uh, I'll be the first to tell you, it looks pretty trick here on our uh, Candy Red 2013 Mustang GT. So uh, we're gonna sign off for today. As always, if you find value in what we do, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on notifications. And then until we catch you in the next one, y'all know what to do for all things S197 Mustang. Keep it right here with the real enthusiasts, LMR. 
高。